It's time for business news now and Wall Street giant Citigroup is undergoing a restructure that CEO Jane Fraser says is designed to unlock value held back by years of accumulated bureaucracy and inefficiencies. And Ms. Fraser discussed the overhaul with me when she was in Singapore last week, where the board of directors met for the first time since 2011. Now, here are the central pillars of City's transformation plan. Firstly, discard two core operating units and instead focus on five key areas, trading, banking, services, wealth management and U.S. consumer offerings. I mean, shedding five layers of management and top managers have until the end of next month to come up with a plan for the streamlining. And right now, the bank is managing expectations around possible job losses. No clear indication yet of just how many will go. But we do know thousands of jobs have already been axed this year but thousands of new positions have also been added. Streamlining has allowed the elimination of about 60 management committees. And now, this is how Ms. Fraser described the changes to me in our exclusive interview. A lot of the model that we're putting in place is, frankly, to free up time for our people to focus on clients and to focus on execution, as opposed to some of the more bureaucratic uh, elements that, that can, can creep into any organization. So it's that sort of shake the place up, flatten down the management layers and the structure that we have, um, make decision making easier and faster, um, and that way we can get people to focus on their clients. And by flattening and simplifying the organization, it'll just make it easier. Our clients want it and they expect it from us. Now here's the financial challenge that Ms. Fraser faces. Now she's stepping up as CEO since she did that in 2021. Shareholders have seen a 40% plunge in Citi's stock price. That is among the worst performances of any of America's big banks. Once the world's largest financial institution, Citi is now worth less than it was 25 years ago. Its $79 billion market value pales in comparison to its bigger rivals, Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase. But CEO Jane Fraser is hopeful that Wall Street is on board with the restructure. Well, we laid out a, a quite clear path for, for our investors um, from where we are to hit medium term ROTCE targets. And we deliberately uh, made sure that we had models that would work from all sorts of different macro and uh, geopolitical scenarios. I'm pleased that we did. Um, I think what we've done is we've delivered against the guidance that we've given the street uh, very consistently. They're, they're just building this case of watching us delivering exactly what we said we would do, both strategically as well as against the financial guidance. So we build our credibility um, and uh, we'll be, as we say, bending the curve. And that will begin in the fourth quarter of next year. Now, if Citigroup's latest results are anything to go by, the immediate trajectory looks positive. It recently posted its best third quarter in at least eight years, a larger than predicted $2.8 billion profit, a rise in net income that was expected to fall, and all of City's five key areas outlined in the restructuring plan saw their revenue rise. A company-wide revenue of $20 billion was around a $1 billion better than analysts had estimated. On the back of that strong quarterly result, CEO Jane Fraser also paints a reasonably upbeat picture for the global economy next year, notwithstanding what she says could be a manageable downturn. It's certainly softening around the world. It's quite a desynchronized picture, so it's different in different parts of the world. And as you say, more resiliency than any of us expected. In the US, um, incredibly resilient. We do think there's a possibility of a recession next year, but it's a manageable one. Both the consumers and the corporates have been in pretty good health as they head into it. Um, Europe is a tougher picture. It's more negative there. They've got more longer-term 
structural challenges they're facing in the labor market and energy prices. Um, and so I think there they'll face some more competitiveness challenges. And Asia is just the bright spot of the world. There are so many different geographies where the changing dynamics are playing into the longer term flavor and benefit here, be it what we see in Indonesia, in Thailand, in Vietnam, as companies are looking at diversifying more of their supply chains and operations beyond China. China is still going to be the next China. It's facing challenges at the moment, but um, the advances that they've made technologically are quite extraordinary in industry after industry. Here in Singapore, a lot of the different new lanes are coming through here. And the digital innovation wealth is an incredible, unstoppable trend, and our entrepreneurial clients in this part of the world blow my mind every time I see them. They're so innovative, they're so creative, and uh, that's going to be enormous wealth creation, but also economic growth creation in the medium to long term. So I think you can tell I'm an optimist particularly in this part of the world and we're very assertively positioning the bank here that's why we brought our Citigroup board meeting was here in Singapore this week um, because we, we want to make sure that we're positioned to really help uh, accelerate for our clients where they're headed and the opportunities and manage the risks I don't want to downplay them but uh, we'll help them manage them so that they can take full advantage of the opportunities ahead